Welcome to West Virginia Beer Roads, a podcast all about beer from a West Virginia perspective. I'm Aaron McCoy here with my podcast partner, Charles Bakwe. Well, Aaron, we've got an exciting interview lined up for today, and I can't wait to hear what we learn. Some really big excitement hit the Charleston, West Virginia beer market this summer when word spread around that short story brewing planned to open a tap room, tap room in downtown Charleston. We've been hearing about it since back in June, but details on the project have been a little bit foggy. So Short Stories Brewery is located in Marion County, about two hours north of Charleston. And in recent times, we've not seen any of their beer in Southern West Virginia. So this new development is very exciting to us. Yeah, we're going to clear up that mystery today. And we're gonna get the details on this project that we have as our guest, Aaron Roque, co-founder of Short Story Brewing from Reevesville. Aaron, welcome to West Virginia Beer Roads. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So Aaron, what were the circumstances that led you guys to make the decision to develop a Charleston tap room? Um, I think a few years ago, uh, we really started to think about what we actually enjoyed about <laughs> being in the in the beer industry and the craft beer industry and the West Virginia craft beer industry. Um, and it was especially because it was during COVID, it was a time when you know, I think a lot of breweries were kind of trying to figure out exactly what they wanted to be and what they wanted to do and how they wanted not just to survive, you know, the next year, but to be like a long term fixture of the local brewing community. And the thing that I think we all love is we love our tap room in Reesville. Uh, we had opened a spot in Deep Creek, Maryland that we came to love as well. We just like that one-on-one -on -one relationship with customers uh, more so than we love the logistics of moving beer around the state in my car or a van or <laughs> um, there's, just, it's just not as sexy. I don't know. <laughs> it's much, it's much more enjoyable to sort of build this space where you can bring your customers to you and um, see them one-on-one. -on -one interact with them, let them interact with your product on sort of your own terms. And um, I think, you know, me and my brother-in-law and my sister, we don't agree on everything, but that was one area where I think we did agree that is that we wanted to sort of take this taproom model and uh, expand upon it in, in whatever way we could. Well, it makes sense. And, and you, like you say, you've already had one experience in a remote taproom in Deep Creek, Maryland. And you know, doing Charleston uh, probably made sense. So why exactly did you select Charleston versus another place in the area? Well, I think Charleston was always the number one choice. When we, when we opened, uh, when we opened, uh, I just out of habit, we decided that, you know, not only we're going to distribute beer to the area around the brewery, the counties around the brewery, but it just made sense. We were like, we're also going to go to Charleston. It's not only a nice population center, but there's a good beer scene there. Um, and we did that for a little while. We distributed to Charleston and Huntington and the areas in between. And we loved getting our beer down there, but it just became a little bit of like a logistical impossibility with the number of people we had working for the brewery with the number of beer we were able to actually produce, it was hard to get down there on a regular schedule. And, you know, if you can't do it exactly right, it didn't make sense to really do it at all <laughs> at that so, time. So having said that other cities, for instance, South Charleston, Taze Valley or Huntington, a little bit further are a little more challenging than, than Charleston would be. Sure. Like that, maybe that two hour cutoff seems about right. <laughs> uh, obviously, um, we're going to be hiring new staff and having someone there to operate that tap room. That's either maybe, maybe not me specifically, but that was still close enough that, you know, we can get down there, we can get beer to that location. So it was like the furthest away we really wanted to go. So if you yeah. guys were five miles further away, we probably wouldn't have chosen Charleston. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. But you selected a Charleston location on summer street. And it's just three, three doors down from a Fife Street Brewery. What led you to that specific location? Uh, I get Fife Street themselves probably has to take at least part of the blame <laughs> for that. We were, we were literally down there with having a sort of exploratory trip. We were meeting some people that we knew 
um, from Charleston. And we went in there to have a beer. It was my first time in there. And we met the owner, uh, super gracious, super great group of people. And we sort of let the cat out of the bag or we, we weren't like trying to be like, hide it, I guess you would say. And he was like, oh, I've got a spot for you. <laughs> and he basically like called his own landlord and we went down and checked out that space. And it wasn't like an immediate, like, oh, this is the one. It, it took us, it took a little bit of imagination to picture what that space could be, but uh, they were definitely partially responsible um, for, and, and they've been a great help, you know, sort of, it's been great to see what they've accomplished there, you know, as like the first on that block. But also I think it's going to be a great little symbiotic relationship for sure. We definitely hear that, you know, the craft brewers and breweries all, all around support each other. And that's fantastic to hear, yeah, know, yeah. especially with them being such a new, new establishment. That's exciting. Yeah, and, and you're actually in the same big building, that Cox Morton building, I think, as, as yeah. the Fife Street Brewery is. Uh, and people that know that downtown area also know that about a half block away is Bad Shepherd Beer Company. Yeah. And so we all have three uh, beer outlets right there for West Virginia beer. It's going to be fantastic. Little district. Yes, yeah. we, we're excited about that. Well, I think that uh, West Virginia beer fans and craft beer fans in Southern West Virginia are excited about this project we've been hearing a lot about it. people asking us and we don't know but you do uh what's the timeline that's so likely that's what everybody wants to know when do you think it'll get open well what's today it's the last day of august currently mm -hmm. uh so I, my hope is that we're open within two to three months uh i don't want to write a check that I can't cash necessarily, but it's, uh, but uh, we, we definitely would like to be open before like the holiday season. Cause we know there's a lot of great stuff going on uh, around the Slack Plaza area for the holidays. And we'd like to be a part of that. Um, so that's my goal. I think we can be in there by the end of October. I don't, uh, our, the, our landlord and our, the contractors are working right now have just been awesome and they're fast faster than i ever thought <laughs> they would be so it's really going to be on us to, to put those final touches on it and make sure that it uh kind of lives up to our our idea of what we want it to be yeah we're really happy that you've got it fast tracked i mean that's uh that's good to hear mm -hmm. yeah well i i personally want to review the primary components that you'll be offering at the new tap room like beer taps, food service, et cetera. Can you talk about that a little bit? It's going to be out of the gate. It's going to be primarily beer. Our goal is to kind of make it a show, like a showcase for the beer itself. We're not going to have very much food at all, maybe a very limited snack menu to start. There is room in the building to expand that down the road, but um, food is like a whole other beast <laughs> and it takes a lot more time and planning. And we, we'd really rather just get in there and sort of create this space that shows off the beer and is also sort of giving people a good introduction to, to us. And we can always add on, you know. <laughs> oh, sure. Just just get in there yeah. and, and make yourselves known. That makes sense. What okay. what about um, as far as capacity? What do you what do you expect, you know, as far as customers? What what will you be able to handle or are you do you know yet? It's it's by far our biggest location. <laughs> it's much bigger than the brewery and it's bigger than, uh, and, uh, and Deep Creek for sure. Um, I think our capacity is over a hundred. So that would be great. There will be a small area in the back that for an event space eventually. Uh -huh. So if people want to have private events there, there's going to be room for, uh, live entertainment. Uh -huh. So that's that'll awesome. hopefully be a goal that, that that's a goal to have. And, um, I'm hoping over the next couple of months, I'll actually be living in Charleston for a while. Who knows? Maybe forever. Who knows? But uh, to sort of get introduced to the local music scene. So that's something I love and I want that there. So um, you'll definitely be seeing seeing some live entertainment. Apparently, that space has a history as a as a music venue. Someone, one of the guys who's working in the building right now said he used to go to shows there. So <laughs> he was like right there in that corner. I used to go to like shows. So it's kind of it would be nice to bring that back to the to the place yeah and it's it's great to hear you say that you're going to come down and personally manage this project at least for a while that's going to be great yeah. to have uh, aaron wrote in charleston West. <laughs> if you see me stop by and say hi oh for sure 
Well, hey, let's let's get back to the tap room. Um, how do you plan to staff the tap room? I think as far as you know, just in general, number of employees or when maybe hiring might might begin. Is do you have a timeline for that? I think within the next couple of days, we're going to be making our own announcement through our own social media. Like this is happening, this is happening, and then that'll probably pretty immediately. Um, we'll be putting a call out if anybody's interested. So if people follow our Instagram, um, they'll see a they'll see a call out for applications. I've also got some just some friends down there who have said like, "Hey, I know some people." So we that model has really worked for us. At, the home location where it's kind of, it's, I think everybody's a friend of a friend. Sure. <laughs> and if you can pull that off, that's the best. I mean, if you get to just have your friends around all day, sometimes it can be pain in the neck, but, it, but for the most part, if you can keep, yeah, if you can keep it in the family, as they say, it's, it's always nice. But yeah, it, it always helps when you know people. And, and I imagine our, our service industry staff are going to be, you know, more than excited to hear that there's a new place that's going to be a, sure. available for them and, and how they can yeah. apply, et cetera. So that's exciting. Yeah. And for uh, folks around the Charleston area that have been to Fife Street Brewing, uh, let me just kind of give you a feel for the space that Short Story will be taking over. It's going to be about twice as wide mm -hmm. as the Five Street, Five Street mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a much wider room and about the same probably depth as far as that. So it's going to be a nice place for a tap room. I mean, very like uh, room for entertainment and, and probably live music. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, Short Story just celebrated its fifth anniversary this summer at your main Reevesville location. And for the past couple of years, you know, we've talked about you've operated a tap room in Deep Creek, Maryland, and the Charleston location will make three tap rooms. So what I'm <laughs> curious about, <laughs> I, you know, you've been selling all the beer you can make. We haven't been able to get it in Charleston. So it kind of begs the question, are you going to expand the brewery to supply the Charleston operation? I mean, how are you going to get enough beer to keep us supplied down here? That's a really good question, Charles. I don't know. I didn't think about that one. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, right now we are lucky in the past year. Uh, Cody, our assistant brewer, has, has been an amazing addition to our staff. So we finally have that second person who can help us up our production and just take a little bit of weight off of Mike in the brewery. We're also starting to use some other people on our staff who have maybe been relegated to the, the bar side. They started to show some interest in the brewery side. So just getting some people in there might allow us a little bit of extra time and a couple more brews a month. It's, it's going to take maybe a couple interest, interesting, tough decisions about our, distri our current distribution. Luck luckily, I, I think we, we've cut back distribution a good bit just not just because of COVID kind of required a little a cutback. So uh, we know that we have, we know that we can handle this, this, thir this location, but yeah, there's, <laughs> there's probably going to have to be some, some thinking about a uh, expansion eventually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think maybe you're going to be able to add at least in the current space, maybe a tank or two more or something that uh, yeah. give you a little extra capacity. Yeah, we could probably add a couple more tanks. We, have, you know, uh, they're doing amazing things with bulldozers these days. You can not, you can push hills, <laughs> you can push a hill, mountain over. You can do whatever. So there, there's some creative possibilities. Yeah, and, and so will this likely, or not likely, impact your can production of your, you know, your can beer? You're going to try to keep maintain the same amount of uh, canning that you've been doing. Our goal is always to have uh, the the coolers at each location full of at least two kinds of beers. Right now, we're actually low on cans, <laughs> but that was more because yeah. we all kind of took vacation at the same time. But but we'll, we <laughs> just canned our uh, Oktoberfest today. We're canning another IPA and another double IPA next week, so we we should be back up. It's been interesting over the since we've had that uh, since we've had our canning machine. You kind of go up and down with the amount of cans you make depending on the season you know when 
you know, when students go out of town, we know in Morgantown, ah, there's going to be a little less beer sales. So let's can some more beer because there'll be more people through our door. So you kind of figure out that fluctuation and just hope for the best, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and, and will or should we expect in Charleston once it gets open that there would also be at least sometimes canned beer available there to purchase to take out? Oh, absolutely. We're, we bought a merchandiser. Well, that will there will be a uh, cans there to go at, at whenever we're open. Uh, well, for our listeners, can you review with us a short story's overall brewing philosophy? How would you basically describe what you strive to do? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think our goal has always been to, when we try something, to try our hardest to perfect that thing and then be able to repeat it and that brings so it's kind of a balance of quality and consistency because mm-hmm. we did we, not only because we don't have enough time to just always be experimenting but like when we, we really want to be able to do the things we do very well and I think we've gotten to a place where when you talk about our IPAs or our loggers uh, that we can do those very consistently where whichever one of our tap rooms you're at or whatever time you're whatever batch of them you're drinking they pretty much always taste the way we expect them to taste and things tend to not enter the uh the rotation unless we know we can we can pull that off yeah well i mean consistency is definitely key so i i definitely could see that as a key strategy i mean and as a craft beer drinker that's what we like um and, and you, you know, Short Story has become very well known as a brewer of excellent IPAs. You do popular hazy IPA styles, probably as well or better than the other other West Virginia brewery, which uh, we actually have one with us that has been, I think, pretty popular for Short Story. It's a uh, lookout. Nice. Uh, if, if, if people can see that, that, that we want to open up and, and talk about and have, have you describe. So you guys are drinking Lookout IPA. It's a six and a half percent ABV IPA. It's pretty hazy, I, I, if I recall. I haven't had one in a minute. Um, it's Citra and Galaxy hops. Um, so the way I always describe, it, I think you get like a lot of like orange rind. Which when you say orange rind, I think you're <laughs> there's a lot of ways to describe an orange, but orange rind is you know that orange aroma but also the bitterness that you would have with like orange zest something like something like that mm-hmm. i also get some peach which i think comes from the galaxy hops a little bit and that one's pretty dry so mm-hmm. i always sort of say you get like a little note of like dry like a really dry completely unsweet champagne something like that yeah as a as an ipa lover this is definitely something i'm gonna look for is this something that uh, Charleston beer fans can expect to maybe see at the new location. Yeah, I'm sure well, that one's in the rotation. You never know when they're coming, but <laughs> it'll be there. Yeah, so you sure. guys do a rotation on your IPAs, and I've kind of noticed they continue to recur, especially the ones that are, people really love. Uh, go, go ahead, maybe yeah. mention a few of those that, that are regulars and, and what people can expect. Well, definitely, I, I think Chasing Daylight is basically become a beer we brew almost weekly or every other week (laughs) it's pretty much one of our most popular beers um you also have right now have our adventure maker on which we really like because it's kind of has more of like a west coasty dank hop profile to it but it's still a hazy high pa so it's kind of like bringing together both coasts a little bit and it's become really really popular because i think people really like that dank hop i IPA. Ours isn't as like crazy dank as some IPAs you'll see, but it's kind of like well balanced with maybe a more like citrusy uh, East Coast style IPA. Um, oh, we got all kinds of good ones. I don't know. Still in the picture. That's a great one. We call that our beer mosa. And sometimes we have to tell people that we're not actually making them a beer mosa, but it's very orange forward. And um, it's one of my favorites. I love having that one on. Yeah, maybe two for the show. Uh, I always enjoy that one. Mm-hmm. Two for the show is very popular. That's probably, in, in terms of the beers, we that, that's probably one of the original five beers we brewed, maybe five to six beers we brewed. And it 
uh, it's probably had the long, it's got the longevity. So it's probably the beer we've, we've brewed the longest. Well, Short Story also produces a line of fruit and sour ales and also a few big, rich, ethereal stouts. So can you talk a little bit about those? Sure. Right now we have the watermelon prickly pear variety on and that, that one hit it just the right season. It was just went. that was like for as hot as it was the week that came out, like it was just a nice, refreshing sour. Let's have a blueberry raspberry one on right now. Um, mm. We've kind of switched. We, we have our fun with prism sours, which are not lactose. And we've kind of switched over to, to making the neon gardens variety with lactose. I'm sure we'll jump back and forth a little bit, but I think we like a little bit that the body and the sweetness that comes from the lactose sour. Um, so that's the one we've kind of focused on more lately. And we're also, we have our, we're getting ready to, it's in barrels currently, our woke up like, or our fell asleep like this Imperial Stout. So it's in barrels and we have a plan. We're going to uh, try our first bottling run. So we're going to be ha doing a oh. limited bottling run on that and uh, for release around the holidays. So be on the lookout for that, hopefully. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Now, some people probably familiar with woke up like this, uh, your stout, and how is this new stout, how does it differ from the woke up like this? So woke up like this is just an imperial coffee stout. Um, and then the fell asleep. We usually, I think we make a batch of woke up like this and we transfer half into barrels and then we add coffee to the other half. So same base recipe, just they're both getting finished differently. Okay, sure. So one will be a more of a breakfast stout uh, format and the, the other one more of just a straight imperial stout. Sure. Very nice. Sure. And it's the time of year that we're doing a lot of, uh, of podcasting and other things coming up here on Oktoberfest beers. Mm -hmm. And I heard you mention earlier that you are having an Oktoberfest beer. Could you tell me a little bit about the style of that Oktoberfest beer? And, and again, remind me when it's coming out. Um, it's out now <laughs> as of, oh, as okay. of, uh, well, we're not open today, <laughs> but it's out tomorrow. Um, so turn and fall, that's just our traditional, our take on a traditional Oktoberfest style beer. Uh, we call it a Marzen so that we don't get, so that Germany doesn't sue us or I don't know what, what happens there, but <laughs> so we call it a Mar our, we call it a Marzen. I really like ours. Uh, this, uh, ours, I think it has a nice just the right amount of sweetness to it and it just it's just the perfect fall beer i don't know like we we made twice as much of it as we made last year just because not only is it a good seller and people like it we just like to have it on tap it's just it i, I know it's meant for october but it's i think it's good all year <laughs> this is a have those uh, caramelly kind of sweet notes to it how would you describe it when you taste it I would say, yeah, just a little bit of caramel and ours probably just because it's us has that little bit of like a dry, dry finish to it, you know? Nice. Malty. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aaron, before we wrap up this podcast, I was wanting you to sort of introduce your key core management group and other, your key employees up there that make short story, the brewery that it is. <laughs> Well, we have we have Co Cody Higginbottom. He's our assistant brewer. He's been with us for exactly one year. He's getting ready to brew. He's he's been brewing solo for months, but he's getting ready to brew his first recipe uh, that he came up with himself. So I think he's doing it this week, and we're going to be canning that one. So he's been such a great addition to the team. He's just such a positive guy, and uh, he's I just he's just great. Um, we have Broderick who runs our kitchen and does our distribution and he's going to be kind of transitioning over and helping in the brewery some. So that's nice. He's a younger, he started, he was only 19 and he's now he's 22, 23, getting married. So it's been fun to see him like start in our kitchen as just like a helper. And now he like runs the kitchen. He, he he's our, just does everything. We got Sean, everybody knows Sean who, uh, he does. He goes to a lot of our events. He's our bar manager and he just like puts us all in a good mood. I mean, what more can you ask for? Um, <laughs> and he he's he sort of came on when we opened the Deep Creek location and he's since kind of transitioned into just being like our go to, you know, manager. Then we got a bunch of young people on our staff. Um, it's just a good staff. 
Yeah, and, and your sister, uh, Abby. Oh, yeah, I can't forget about her, Abby. <laughs> she runs the place. She's my boss, pretty much. She just tells me what to do. <laughs> yeah, but she's a smart one. She does the books and keeps us all paid <laughs> and makes sure all the trains run on time. And, and, and of course, the, the main uh, brewer. Yeah, you oh, mentioned Mike. The, I think I mentioned him this. earlier. So, yeah, then Mike, I mean, he just, he's like the rock. <laughs> that uh you know this is he was the brewers so he was the one who you know he 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 didn't put this idea in our head but he's the reason we do it and you know um it's been nice over the past year to not only see him work with get to work with someone else and train that person but kind of get some of the a little bit of the the weight off of his shoulders a little bit so you know he's a dad there he he's a dad and so he gets to spend a little more time with the kids now so it's just good yeah, that, that is so exciting. And, and we are so happy and excited for you guys and absolutely yeah. cannot wait for you to be yeah. in Charleston, West Virginia. And of course, we welcome you and wish you the best of luck and cannot wait to have your beer yeah. at your new tap room. Yeah, we're excited. It's been fun over the last couple of months. We like we know the rumors were getting out, but it was almost more fun to just see like the rumors like I, I hear the breweries in the capitol building or like it was like, <laughs> like, it was like you know i'm sure like i was hearing kind of some wild things but uh hopefully this dispels all the rumors and people are you know happy with what we're doing <laughs> oh, I, no, there's no doubt that our craft beer fans here in charleston or in surrounding areas are going to be very thrilled that, that you're here and happy with what you're doing so thank you Great. for taking well, the time with us today and no of problem. course, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you very much. This brings us to the close of another podcast. Remember, you can subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite podcast host. Thank you for listening to West Virginia Beer Roads. West Virginia Beer Roads is a production of BrilliantStream.com.